Good Saturday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a look at your forecast, not only for the rest of the weekend, but we'll take a look into the Thanksgiving travel days coming up in the days ahead and looking at probably some pretty good weather out there for right now. Not seeing a lot of major problems. This time of the year, we can get a lot of nasty weather. This time around does not appear to be happening. There will be some problems with some rainfall out there from time to time, but we will be talking more about that coming up here in just a little bit. So if you've got any questions about the forecast, we'll do our best to answer those as best we can. Also coming up, we'll take a look at the tropics. We'll also take a look and see what's going on with more of your weather pictures. And thank you to everybody for sending in some great ones out there. Haven't been able to feature all of them just yet because we've had so many of them, but thank you very much uh, for doing so. If you're just tuning in tonight and never been here before, this is our online video weather blog giving you an opportunity to take a look at what the weather's like around the Mid-South. So if you've got pictures out there. We'd love to see them. Tweet them to me at the various social media networks out there. And if you've got weather reports, drop them into the comments section and we'll read those off as we get them for right now. Wind speed, cloud cover, temperature. Let's just do some amateur meteorology and show everybody where you're from and what the weather's like where you're at. If you can't stick around for the whole thing, forecast is in the red bar at the bottom of your screen, or you can pick up, again, the 7 to 10 day forecast right here at wreg.com slash weather. So thanks to everybody for joining us for tonight. A lot of people tuning in for this evening. Got a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and get started for tonight and talk about what the forecast is going to be overnight. Heading out the door tomorrow morning, church, Sunday school, wherever you're going, temperatures will be back a little bit on the brisk side, back about the mid-40s. Clouds will be on the increase, and the winds light, but definitely enough to kind of re-emphasize that chill out there. So please make sure you got a jacket or at least a light coat. Temperatures north of I-40 could be in the lower 40s, south of I-40, upper 40s to lower 50s, somewhere in there. So again, could be looking at the possibility of some pretty chilly numbers into tomorrow. Not exactly the winter weather temperatures we had a couple of days ago, but also not bad. Temperatures were, again, not bad for this time of the year. 67 degrees, just above normal for this time of the year of 62. 38 the low, just below normal this morning. And again, doing very nicely on rainfall for the year. For the month, we picked up a pretty good amount, about 3.5. That's almost exactly where we should be. So doing very good on the rainfall for right now. And as of right now, we'll be looking at possibility of more rainfall coming up, but just not that much at this point in time. Betty Sue Gregg from Enid, Mississippi. Welcome. Glad you're having a beautiful night down that direction. 51 degrees and clear in New Bern, Tennessee. Paulette Morrow, thank you very much uh, for checking in for this evening. Everybody else, welcome to the show and thanks for stopping by for a little bit. Tony Teal, 34 and cloudy, I'm assuming that is as of right now. Kim McIntosh voting for Great temperatures today to give you more of that. Well, we'll see what we can do uh, at this point in time. Ronnie Mowdy, think December is going to be cold for us. Uh, possibility of that, although it looks like it's going to be, again, pretty mild according to the Climate Prediction Center's forecast out there for right now. So it could be seeing a little bit more in the way of right across the board normal out there. Losing daylight steadily again down about another minute of daylight into tomorrow. Sunrise tomorrow morning at 6.38. Sunset Sunday at about the same time as today, maybe just a little bit less at about 4.53 or so. Both river bridges doing their business for tonight. No problems at all with visibility out there. Mighty lights on the I-40 bridge lit up quite nicely doing its animated display. Likewise, Big River Crossing also showing its display from a little bit earlier, kind of a muted display on Big River Crossing right now. And those displays will be wrapping up here in about the next 90 seconds or so, but at least we're getting a good view for both bridges for tonight. And again, looking back toward West Memphis, Arkansas for tonight, so a beautiful view out there across the Mississippi River. There's a little bit more color around Big River Crossing for this evening, and again, looking very nice across much of the area tonight. A little bit on the chilly side, but otherwise not doing too bad out there for right now. Storm Tracker 3S radar, nothing showing up in the way of precipitation for right now. Scott Jarvis, 44, and calm winds in Banner, Mississippi. Thank you very much for that one. Luxora, Tracy, beautiful eyes, Creighton Range, 34 degrees right now. A little bit chilly out there in that area. 
Uh, Amy Hayes, what about St. Louis? I think snow today, not sure. A little bit of that. We'll get to that coming up in just a little bit for right now. Deshay Moore, snow for Christmas. Eh, a little too early to tell on that. So again, could be the possibility of some of that. We'll see what happens uh, into and around the area. Cold in Oxford, Sandra Owens Fry. Thank you very much uh, for checking in there. Back to our north again, some winter weather taking place from the Rockies all the way back to almost the Great Lakes. We're not looking at a lot of problems up and around this direction, but there were some pretty good areas of snow, enough to shut down I-80 in Wyoming for a period of time and driving traffic off the roadway to uh, areas that were open, and that was about it. Now, right now, everything north of I-70, and none of this is going to be a problem for us down here in the Mid-South area. So we see little, if anything, taking place uh, into and around the area for right now. Loving the weather. Cassandra San Moses, thank you very much uh, for that one. Uh, checking in from the area. Wynn, Arkansas. Rita Allen, outside wedding today. Very cool. Hopefully everything got off uh, with no problem there. 48 in Huntington. Teresa Esther, thank you very much. Paris, 45 degrees. Vicki Winter Boykin, thank you very much for checking in there. Temperatures across the Mid-South, back in the mid-50s around Dyersburg earlier this evening and dropping by just a little bit. Mid to upper 40s, a few lower 40s showing up from time to time, but not doing too badly out there. If you'd like to see this information on your computer system, again, go to wreg.com slash weather and click on the weather bug information, and you'll be able to pick that up a little bit later on. 53 in Blytheville, Michelle bynum Luttrell. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Thank you very much uh, for that one. And for everybody else checking in again from tonight, Jeff Frog Wheeler from South Haven, but on vacation in New Albany. Clear and 46. No deer in the freezer yet. Well, good hunting to you. Hope everything goes well out there, and please be careful. It's Paris, Mississippi, 45. Vicki Winters Boykin, thank you very much for that one. Winds on the screen here, the moving lines showing the winds coming up from out of the south. That should be doing a pretty good job of keeping our temperatures up by a little bit. It won't be bone-chilling cold, but it's definitely going to be, again, on the chilly side for tonight. Now, the gray colors over here, that's cloud cover, and that's going to start to thicken up as we get into tomorrow morning. So hopefully some good views of sunrise tomorrow, but mostly we're going to be seeing those winds keeping the temperatures not quite as chilly as they could be, mid to upper 40s or so into tomorrow. Then, as we hit lunchtime, that's where the chances of rain start to wander our direction. Direction. We're not looking at severe weather. We're not looking at heavy rainfall. But by the time we get into afternoon, mostly cloudy for the Mid-South and chances of rain slowly overspreading the Mississippi Valley, heading into the eastern parts of the viewing area east of the Mississippi River by the time we hit about News Channel 3 at 5 coming up later on tomorrow. And those winds out of the north behind that cold front may drop the temperatures north of I-40 by a bit, upper 40s here south of that back into the upper 50s to the lower 60s or so. So we should be seeing, again, the possibility of a little bit difference in temperatures out there, but not really seeing too much out there uh, for right now. Blair Rousey, how's the weather in Osceola, Arkansas? We'll take a look at that forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Whitney Kellum, rain on Tuesday night. Uh, we'll talk about the forecast for that coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Tom Barnett, thank you very much for the kind words. I do appreciate that. Jerry Bow, loving fall weather at Sardis Lake. Very good to hear there. Now, coming up over the next several days, as we go into around Friday, not seeing any rainfall early during the day, but as we go into the later days, uh, later portion of the day on Friday, getting out to shop, you're going to be seeing more rainfall coming up as we go into Friday afternoon and evening. So you may be ducking and diving some rainfall by the end of the week as well. Now tomorrow, the chance of showers is mainly going to be in the afternoon. I think it's mainly going to be late afternoon into evening before we really see too much of anything out there and really just not all that much. So again, for the Mid-South at this time, looking at the possibility of temperatures pretty close to normal, more clouds throughout the day, and those showers developing and moving in as we go into Sunday night. Monday, across much of the area, back to school, back to work. For those of you who have those coming up, temperatures, again, a little cooler thanks to the clouds and the chances of rain cooling off the atmosphere as that rain comes down. We'll be looking at that chance of rainfall out there. But once again, no thunderstorms, just light rainfall, and that should be about all that we get again for right now. Now, chances of rain might linger past about Monday afternoon and evening, but that should do it for the rain. About the same temperature on Tuesday, cool, dry, mostly sunny, and that should hold all the way through Thanksgiving. So if you have anybody who's coming into town 
for Thanksgiving or you're heading out of here around the next few days. So far, so good on the temperatures. Definitely below normal once again. Mid to upper 50s for the high temperatures, which again, lower 60s is normal for this time of the year. Now, again, Friday afternoon and evening, we see that chance of some scattered showers coming our direction and looking at better chances of rain by next Saturday. That, again, not really doing too badly because the busiest travel day of the year as everybody heads back from Thanksgiving. That looks pretty good around here. And again, a few clouds, temperatures back, very close to normal, lower 60s. So looking pretty good technically all the way through the week with only a couple of chances of rainfall out there. Now remember, this time of the year, right around Thanksgiving, we can get severe weather. We can get ice storms. We can get snowstorms. We can get very cold temperatures, none of which is happening at this point. So very good news on the forecast. A couple of minor annoyances with rainfall. That's going to be really about it. So things are looking very quiet across much of the area. And again, on Turkey Day coming up, get the chance to get out there and walk off that dinner, play some football. Uh, I'll be at the Toilet Bowl game Friday or uh, Thanksgiving morning, and I'll show share more about that particular game that's been going on for nearly half a century coming up throughout the next few days. So if you want to know more about the Toilet Bowl game in Memphis Thanksgiving morning, stick around for more from my social media networks, and I'll tell you more about that a little bit later on. Good news in the tropics. We've got about two weeks or so before the end of hurricane season, and things are very quiet in the tropics for right now. Very warm water around the Caribbean, the western areas of the Atlantic, and the Gulf of Mexico, but nothing is developing at this point. So according to National Hurricane Center forecasts, we have little, if anything, to expect for the next two to five days. Very good news. Hope that trend continues, but we can get some late season storms out there that need to be paid attention to. So if you're traveling to the Gulf, Florida, or the East Coast, you still have to pay attention to these forecasts and we'll help you do that. So keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for more on that. Thanks to everybody for some great pictures out there from Memphis underscore Tom. Thank you very much for some beautiful views from Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. Beautiful view from there early this morning. Young Money Calm, hope I'm saying that right. Uh, didn't get a location on this, but a few jet contrails out there at sunrise for this morning. Not much beyond that. And Fred Style 88, beautiful view from Oxford from this morning on the campus of the University of Mississippi. And looking again at mostly clear skies out there and some nice starlight out there as well. From some of our Facebook photos, Lynn Frank, some of the snow from Mason, Tennessee, out across the area. A little bit heavier snowfall north of I-40 in the last couple of days out there. Scott Jarvis, again, one of yours. Banner, Mississippi, a beautiful sunset from that particular area. So thank you very much for that. April Hentz, checking in with 47 in Eureka Springs. Thank you very much. Uh, for that one, checking in for right now. Uh, Diana Burkett Davies, uh, don't know if you're talking to this uh, Todd here, but again, this is, I'm, I'm Austin, not Todd, so thanks for checking in, but uh, appreciate the, the shout out. We'll tell Todd that you stopped by. And made to order Saturday in Batesville, Mississippi, Vera Davis. Thank you very much uh, for checking in there. Rest of the forecast, again, coming up. Again, we'll take a peek at that in just a little bit. Gloria. Armin Deres, hope I'm saying that correctly. Good view of snow on the rose bushes around Vihalia, Mississippi. And Julie Marks Owens, I did not get a location on this, but a very unique snow person out there, including I love the snow covered uh, skull with the mustache and the full beard sitting across the ball cap, flags, and I believe what looks like a stalk of celery mixed in with the carrots for the nose and the eyes on the snowman. So wherever this is from, thank you very much for sending that in. And if you've got weather pictures like these folks did, please tweet them to me, post them on my Facebook page, or again, you can email them to me at austin.onic at wreg.com. Would love to have some more of your weather pictures so we can share them throughout the course of of the rest of the weekend at this time. Alexis Brown, snow headed this way, not at this time, so not looking at any major problems uh, at this point in time for right now. Uh, Ronnie Roberts, how much bread do we need? I've got plenty at my house, so if you need some extra toast, I can lend you some of that. What I'm really running low on is root beer, but that's usual for me. So again, please keep that in mind next time you're going to the store. Would love to have more about that. Uh, back to the west. Again, keeping an eye on the wildfires out there. We've got, again, numerous warnings and watches in place out there. Most of what we're looking at for right now is air quality, and that is, again, not good news 
into and around portions of the western United States. Now things may be changing by just a little bit in the next few days because if everything works we may be seeing the possibility of more winter storms coming through and that could drop some snow and some rainfall and really help the firefighters out there because some of these places out across the inner mountain west and the coastal areas of the United States are looking at some just absolutely terrible conditions out there. Fire is very possible and that's again one of the places that we've been seeing a lot of problems is in parts of the Sierras between San Francisco and Reno, uh, portions of the campfire and then even farther downwards into and around Southern California. Air quality warnings and effects. Some of that from the Woolsey fire and numerous conditions out there that are just pretty ugly and of course very tragic out across the western United States. So if you're heading out there anytime soon soon. Air quality is uh, not good at this point in time. Anything from eastern Washington down to California is going to be, again, seeing some problems out there. Now, we mentioned this because of the fact that what happened in Paradise, California is just one example of what can happen uh, when disasters hit. And it's important to be ready for anything involving disasters out there. And from ready.gov, more information about wildfires, about how to prepare for them. You're going camping someplace. Best to keep up to date on what's happening with things like that out there. Now, again, wildfires here in the Mid-South are few and far between. They can still happen, but it's important to know what to do to get ready for that. So we'll be posting a lot of these things coming up in the course of the next couple of days and weeks to help you get ready for what might happen. Here in the Mid-South, we've got severe weather, we've got earthquakes, and we've got, again, other things that can happen, including hurricanes on the East Coast and the Gulf Coast, the Office of Emergency Management from the City of Memphis, tons of great information available here, and a great opportunity to learn more from the Office of Emergency Management on things like the tornado siren system, getting practiced and ready to go for disasters, knowing what to do before a disaster strikes. Winging it and just saying, I'll deal with it when it happens, that's not a plan. That's not safe. That's not good thinking. And there's many different ways that you can use to get ready for what happens out there. One of those is called CERT, Community Emergency Response Team Training. It's a decently time-intensive course. You can cram it into a Friday afternoon and throughout the rest of a weekend to get the basics of what you need to know. Disaster psychology, search and rescue, basic first aid, signals and communication, all that type of stuff is crammed into one great course. Highly recommend you taking that. You can get more from Shelby County Office of Preparedness or City of Memphis Office of Emergency management if you'd like to know a little bit more there. Now, this is something that, again, a lot of people don't like to contemplate. Again, a lot of people have lost their lives in those wildfires out there and communications at this time, trying to figure out who's alive, who's in shelters, things like that, that can get kind of difficult, especially right during and right after disaster as it's winding down. One of the things you might consider is the National Next of Kin Registry. You can even get a marker to place on your license to show that you have signed up for this. And again, it just shows that you're on this registry to let people know that if in case, God forbid, something happens to you, they at least will know a little bit more about where you were, what you were doing. Again, it's not an intrusive service. It just helps you to stay in touch in case something happens. And during a major disaster, getting that information out there is sometimes next to impossible. So this is something you may consider at this point in time to keep around out there. Now, more information at ready.gov. Again, getting ready before something happens is critical and imperative to get stuff ready to go. Getting ready, again, involves a whole bunch of different things. Assembling documents, assembling medication, spare batteries, spare supplies, all kinds of stuff like that out there. But communication is one of the most important things that you can possibly do when it comes to getting ready. And having a communications plan is something to think about. If you have an out-of-state contact, that's something that can really help you. And filling out one of these forms, a family emergency communications plan, will help you get ready. In case something happens to where you can't contact family members in an area affected by a disaster, say a major earthquake hits the Mid-South and communication lines are down, if you can't contact people locally, you might be able to contact someone out of town. So having an out-of-town point source, someone to take your phone call and say, I just heard from someone someone, they're okay, or I haven't heard from someone, either direction, you get an opportunity to get that information where it needs to go to instead of waiting, wandering around, and worrying about where people are. So this is, again, a very good idea to have an idea on this. If you'd like to know more about making a family plan, getting things ready to go, 
Anything involving those courses, the National Next of Kin Registry, we'll put all this stuff, again, at weather.gov or at uh, wreg.com slash weather if you'd like to know more about what goes on out there. Now is the time to prepare. We're in the middle of storm season number two for the Mid-South, ready to go for severe weather, ready to go for winter weather. Go to ready.gov if you'd like to know more about what to do. This is the time frame when nothing else is going on to get ready for disasters. And if anybody missed anything out there trying to write everything down, if you want to know more about it, email me, and I'll be glad to let you know more about what you can do to get ready. Being ready is the key. Knowing what to do before anything happens is key. Communication can help reduce a lot of worry and a lot of fretting during and after an emergency. So please consider that and take some of the lessons of what happened in Paradise, California to heart. And again, be ready for something like that. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3 and we'll keep you updated on things like that. Coming up in just about maybe 15 minutes or so, we'll be talking about weather where the troops are. Again, our little salute to what's going on where weather is at, where at locations where American troops, sailors, soldiers, service personnel are out in and around the area. For right now, getting some rain in Faizabad in Afghanistan, 40s and 30s as sunrise comes up on Sunday morning. If you'd like to see more of these around the rest of the world, including what's going on here in the Mid-South, again with naval support activity in Millington, part of the, the again American military family establishments around the country and around the world. We'll have more on that coming up here in just a little bit. So join me at about 8.45 or so, and we'll talk a lot more about that coming up here again in the next few minutes. So again, please keep it updated with me on News Channel 3 as we go into the rest of the evening. Once again for tonight, looking good. More rain tomorrow and no winter weather and no severe weather as we go toward Thanksgiving. So looking very good across the Mid-South all the way on through. And we'll keep you updated on those changeable forecasts. Again, you can find out more at this website, wreg.com, or again in the blue bar at the bottom of your screen, social media information or any of these icons right here. You can find me just about any place around cyberspace out there. That'll do it for the early edition of News Channel 3's Weather Overtime video. Video blog. We'll have a lot more on your forecast coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. And of course, I'll have an update on your forecast on daybreak tomorrow morning, Sunday morning, starting at 6 o'clock, right before CBS News Sunday morning kicks in. Stick around for a lot more with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the weekend on air and online. And thanks for joining us for the early edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Stick around for more.